Hello. I am here to do a Wednesday warm up. And so I'll wait a second for those of you that are in my groups to pop on. I am Kathy Freeman with Kathy Freeman Art. And I'm so happy to be here today. I had a individual who asked um, earlier, oh, I think it was last week. They asked if the, um, she was having struggles with creating a tree on a project that we had. And so I thought for today's Wednesday warm up, I would pop on here and let's talk trees. Um, I don't really consider myself a tree expert, but I love making trees. So I love to share the passion that I have for creating them with you. And maybe you'll pick up a few tips here and there as we go along. This gives you a couple of examples. If you look at my um, video I'm showing or the down the camera that's showing you down on my um, table here, this is a project that I did in a journal page. And I love the texture that this created on the page because I use modeling paste. So I'm going to do a sample of that in a few minutes so you can see how I went about doing that. Here's another project. This is actually a project that we're going to have in the membership. So those of you that are in my membership, you art sisters, you're going to have this in the library so that you can do that. That's using modeling paste. And that's the same project, but I wanted to show you the difference in color. So when we talk color here in a second, I'll pull those back out. Now, this one is just paper. It's cut paper that's been collaged on to create that tree. And this one is primarily drawn on. I've added just a teeny bit of the modeling paste right here because I don't know why I just cannot get away from using that texture. I love the, what it creates, but it's watercolored on. So that kind of gives you a few examples. Let's talk now about drawing a tree. And I think where this um, little artist was, where she was having troubles, this challenge was, is basically the branches looked about the same size as the trunk. So let's talk about um, drawing a trunk and drawing the branches. I remember in school, we would do kind of this very slight hourglass shape like so. And I think I'm going to need to change to a marker so you can see this on camera. Pencil's not going to be very easy. All right, the lines of the tree, and that's not a great marker. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Get there. Let's see if this is a little better. Oh, so much better. All right, the hourglass kind of shape of a tree as we draw. Trees are typically have a little bit of shape to them rather than just straight lines. The, when you branch off with it, the whole goal is to take your branch and as you move outward, it starts thicker and goes thin. And I believe where she was having problems is that line stayed the same width all the way across. And so as you're working with your trees, think about thicker at the bottom and going thinner towards the top. And of course, they look thinner because of the distance that we see them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one thing else too, is that when I'm usually shading a tree, I'll come into these areas and I'll add a little more shading to that area to emphasize that. And then of course, on the bottom of the branch, I'll add a little shading to it too. Just a little bit to go down. Now, the other thing that, and this is personal preference, okay, is a tree to me <laughs> is um, a living thing that has had many years of what I consider wisdom and knowledge. Um, you think about the things that a tree, all the stuff that goes around it, that happens on around it, and the and the birds and the and the animals and that use the tree. So I never like to just make a tree totally straight lines. I think that adding a little bit of shape to that trunk makes for more interest in the tree than having just straight lines. 
but it depends on the piece and what you're trying to create. The same thing with the branches. When you're creating the branches, giving them just a little bit of a wave to that, maybe even um, stuttering. Is that, is that the word to use? Does, does that make sense? But as you're, if you're trying to draw it, kind of stutter and lift your pen in that and add some of that. Um, let me put that a little closer and see if that pops up. But that adds a texture to it and a, and a difference of line, which adds interest to the tree. Going back up now, it, since I have a little hole there, that makes a great spot to come off of there and to add another little branch going out. And that's the thing with trees. It's just a series of, I always draw them first with a pencil. That way I can go back and erase where, um, when I add another branch, then I can go back and erase where those two meet right there. So that kind of gives um, an answer to her question, I, I hope, is that the trunk is always going to be larger than your branches. Um, rarely do you see, I mean, you may see some pretty large branches on a very old tree, but it still um, gravitates or, or narrows as it goes uh, up the tree limb. Never stays exactly the same. The lines never stay parallel. Okay, now, and if you're on here, hi, Joni, how are you? <laughs> Anybody that is on here, if you have questions, please type them in and let's chat for a minute um, and see if I can answer them or uh, anything that might pop up. I've got this right here, some watercolor paper, and I thought, let's just play for a minute. So I'm going to use my pencil. And draw on here a tree. The other thing that I tend to do too is if you noticed when I drew this, if I can get a little closer so you see it. This line, I don't make them exactly the same. This line, the branches, it goes up and it starts to widen at the top. The branch took off up here. But as I came along here, I started that branching off a lot earlier. It's, it's such a gradual change you don't notice. But that um, variety that uh, it's not identical gives it a little more, I think, realistic look to it. Hi. Hello, how are you, Melissa? How do you use mediums on watercolor paper? What mediums are you particularly talking about? Are you talking about um, acrylic paints? Are you talking about um, matte medium? What mediums are you, are you referring to, Melissa? Give me a little more specific and see if I can answer that question for you. I like to use watercolor paper for pretty much all of my projects because of the weight that it gives to me. And so whether I'm doing these right here is watercolor paper. Um, and this has on here the modeling paste and acrylic paint. So I simply use it just because it's a lot, uh, has more density to it than the mixed media. If you have a mixed media pad, though, that will work. But I would suggest that you um, cover over it with some gesso first or put a layer of matte medium or something on it to give it a little bit more strength and stability to it. The other reason I like to use uh, watercolor paper is because I love to use watercolor and intermingle all of it. And um, here you go. I meant the modeling paste. Thank you, you answered. Okay, awesome. I'll show you, we'll actually do one on this real quick and you can see that. Okay. Glad I answered. Thank you for putting that in there. Okay, so I'll come up here and I usually think about, okay, I'm not going to go dead center. You can, no big deal, but I'm going to start right here. A little bit of distance between the two and then just start moving towards that other line and I'm going to move back and forth and create that teeny bit of a, like a little knot hole or something. I don't know really what it is, but see, it just adds a little variety and interest to it. Now, this one can head off and go that direction, which it will, but then I'm going to take it off up here. 
like another little branches. Then we'll take off here and go up this way and come back. And that actually would, I want to keep it pretty close. I don't want to come that down, far down. Okay, so that starts that. Now let's jump into the modeling paste. I do love using that. I think the first time I ever used it was last year. I was creating some leaves for um, an event that I was hosting and they were fall leaves. And it was just a really neat way to quickly create that texture on them. Okay. All I do is I take the modeling paste and I'm going to start upside down so I can move it. You doesn't have to, but think about your spreading have you ever frosted a cake? Think about frosting a cake. You want just enough pressure on there that you can get a nice light layer. You don't want it too thick, but if it's so thin, then um, it dries too quickly and you can't really get what you need to do next, the next step in. You can leave areas. Can you see that? Can you see how I've left areas? And I also leave, sometimes I'll leave these little knobby areas that are created. I never try when I'm doing anything. Obviously, I'm using this for texture. So my goal is not to make it ultra smooth. All right. So I go ahead and I let this the product create um, and do what it does best. And that is create that texture. So here we go up like so. And then just put it on. I'm going to put a little bit on this one. This direction. You see what I'm doing? Any questions so far? If you go outside the line, it's easy. You just pop it off. Just scrape it off. Wipe it down. And look, I, I think oh, <laughs> I get really excited about this. I'm sorry. It's a little ridiculous, but it creates such wonderful texture right there. And you don't have to worry about drawing that in. Um, and that variety, that texture adds interest to your piece. All right. The more you can get a person to stop and look and question and say, oh, how did they do that? How did they make that? The better, you know, that's just really what art's all about is get people to think and question. Always put your lid back on quickly. Don't leave it off because it dries out. And then I would get this in water myself too because it, it dries on that. So if I'm doing something with maybe a stencil and I've got modeling paste, then I will have a little tub of some sort off to the side filled with water so that I can um, pop it in there. And then I don't have to worry about stopping what I'm doing to go do that. Okay. Now, the next step I like to do with the trees, let me grab this and wipe that off, is to start creating those lines. So I take the edge of my palette knife and I can feel that some of this has already started to dry a little bit, which isn't a problem, but that's why you just keep moving with it. And these lines are never, act, well, I don't, I don't want to say never because I'm not a tree expert, but I don't think that they're exactly straight. So they'll go back and forth a little bit. Can you see that? See how those lines? Which takes a lot of pressure off of us artists of trying to make these perfect lines, doesn't it? <laughs> Sometimes we get working at something, we get it in our mind, and we want it to look just so. And it's like, it can be a little frustrating. All right. There we go. <laughs> yes, I do get excited. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. I'd love to see your paintings. Okay, so there we go. Now let's dry that. You do want to get it as dry as possible.
I do the little dry test. If you've got a thick area, it's going to take a little longer for that to actually dry out. So let it dry. Because if you do hit it with water, I've used watercolor on this before, and it works great. But if you um, put too much or, or sit there and try to work with it too, for too long, then it starts to uh, disintegrate and dissolve some of this. So I...
All right. <laughs> well, this is very sad. <laughs> Facebook that just decided to drop All me. All right. <laughs> well, this okay, get off the phone. I'm scrambling trying to send messages out here. So how odd is that? That is not fun. <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry about that. It did. It just decided to just kick off, but I'm back. So let's keep going. Um, gotta love internet, don't you, when it's happening. Uh, here we go again. I am at the part now. I had dried it and I was going to start watercoloring it. So I grabbed my brush and the last thing I was saying before it went dead <laughs> was um, I start with the lightest color first. I typically do. The lightest brown, and I I'll, I love to use uh, watercolor at this particular point, and the watercolor works great across the uh, product modeling paste. So you can see when I do it, I also, I don't, um, I'm not super careful. I, which what I mean is I want the variety, the changes happening here. So I just flop it on there. Oh, flop it, that's not the right term. But I paint it on and I'm not trying to... Do it very loosely. Like so. Okay, if anybody is still there, I hope I'm not just talking to myself, but if anybody is still here, please just put something in the comments and let me know that you're still there, all right? So sorry about that. It just completely, I don't know what the internet did. Hope it doesn't do it tomorrow during my live event. <laughs> that will be an interesting. All right. The next thing I do is I go towards a darker color, a darker brown, actually. And I skip around and add that. Maybe emphasizing it in a certain area. Not covering, I don't want to cover everything exactly, uh, you know, the same. I want some areas to be, and create that uh, different, the texture in that by the color. I think the other thing that happened is I remember um, talking with the other artist is Sometimes, and, I, and this happens to me a lot too, is I can get working and and not be thinking about, so I'll be thinking about something else basically, and I'm not really paying attention. And I'll end up putting about the same amount. So if you've got the same amount, and what do I mean by that? You know, the same amount of the two different colors, then they're just fighting off of each other. They're not really complementing each other. Hi, Carol. Thanks for sticking with it. And Facebook user, it doesn't have your name on here, but thanks for sticking with it. Oh, I tell you, ladies, I really hope that I'm doing a live event tomorrow. It's, um, and I'm excited about it. We've got some great artists, but I'm really nervous about the internet issues that always pop up when you're trying to do something and you haven't done it going live. All right. Can you see what I've got happening there? Just the, the, changing of the colors and that and um, how it creates texture on its own. So if you don't have modeling paste, what you just saw me do with the watercolor will create texture for you also. You can do the same thing with acrylics. Now, this is personal preference. You may not like it, um, but I will usually go towards a dark, dark gray, or maybe even a turquoise if I'm just feeling like it. <laughs> and I'll add little bits of that. I, I tend to follow along where the lines are though. So where those lines that I, 
you know, carved out with my modeling paste. I will come back with my brush. And follow those lines and it will go down into those little crevices. And you're just adding a shadow is what you're doing and creating a little more emphasis on those. Now what you're seeing happening here is it's getting too wet right there and it's starting to lift it all up. So what I need to do, it's also getting into my watercolor. So I need to get that cleared out. I'm going to grab my dryer. You just simply stop, get your dryer. and dry it. Once you've got it dried, whoops, then you can come back. And I'm gonna add a little turquoise. Is it just works so nicely with the brown. Skipping around, brushing, brushing, and um, letting it blend. And that's really it. Let it kind of dry some more if you want. Let's go back to the dark here. I can add that, and I think that just wants to have some more brown on top of it. There we go. That definitely adds a lot of texture right there to your tree. All right, that's how you create that tree trunk. Um, let's come back. Maybe we've got a little moss growing on our tree. So I'm going to take some of the olive green. And this is really subtle. Um, you're not able to see it that much on camera. I'm adding that in there. Okay, let's say to myself, hmm, now I'm a mixed media artist. So I'm using, um, I like to use, and I, uh, I <laughs> always started out as an acrylic artist, um, but there are so many cool things to use. <laughs> so this thought that just crossed my mind, I've not really used this before, but why don't we try using the distress side distress oxide inks this is one of my favorite the vintage photo let's see if that makes any difference faint, but not that much of a difference. So that was just a good experiment, something to try right there. Um, your best bet to use, of course, is acrylic paints. I would tend to um, water them down, maybe put a medium in them or something to give them a little so they're not so dense and thick because it's that flowing that you're wanting to create with that tree. 
Okay, what other questions? Any other questions for anybody before we head off today that I can answer about these trees? So to kind of summarize it, make sure that when you're creating your tree that it's a gradual narrowing as it goes upward, starting with the trunk. And always, I usually see, I don't know if this really is the truth or if it's just in my mind, but I always think of the tree because of the roots getting wider down at the bottom. And then I always narrow mine in a little bit here in the center, kind of like a waistline. <laughs> and then we come back out and start forming the branches. The branches on my trees are never the same size as the trunk. Now, this particular branch is taken off. So this is going to be, a, if it was a very large tree, actually, the branches would spread out this way because so they could narrow. All right. Thank you so much for sticking with me. And I will be popping back on and sharing something else with you all. If you, let me add this at the very end here. If you are not part of, um, if you haven't signed up or whatever, to come over to my free group, pop on over there and, um, just like the page and come join us. And that's going to be a great place for as you're working on your projects and that, and you're taking some of the, trying some of these things out to post. Love to have you over there. I will put that link directly into the comments here. So you'll be able to find that and not have to try to, you know, dig through Facebook, locating it. Um, also press the follow button on my uh, main business page so that we can keep in touch. Thanks so much for showing up today here. Hi, Carol. Good to see you. Bye, Joanny. You guys, Melissa, you guys have a great day.